Hey guys, I guess some of you may know that in the past few years, I've always been flying with Cafe Pacific, and so today is a very special day for me as I am trying a new airline, Sri Lankan Airlines. Joining in 2014, Sri Lankan is the newest member of the One Road Alliance. The check-in service was provided by Jardines. However, I felt the staff came across as a bit boorish. Sri Lankan uses the Premium Plaza Lounge. But since it's always packed, I went straight to the Qantas lounge, entering using my One Road Sapphire status. Most Qantas flights depart in the evening, and so the lounge was quite empty during my visit. The bartender was so nice. When he saw that I was taking photos, he garnished my mojito with extra leaves so that it could look even better. Find out more about Qantas's signature drinks on my Instagram. <laughs> This national carrier uses the midfield concourse, which is mainly used by budget airlines. At the time I booked the flight, it was scheduled to be operated by an Airbus 320. A few weeks later, it was changed to an Airbus 321 Neo. I've never been on one, and I was quite excited to try this very new aircraft type. Stepping onto the air bridge. We were told that the aircraft was not yet ready and needed to wait here for a while. My seat was located right next to door two, with the seat in front of me missing, meaning I had a lot more legroom. Something interesting is that Sri Lankan only charges for extra legroom seats on wide-body aircrafts. In other words, I didn't need to pay extra for the seat on my flight. This aircraft was configured in a typical free-free layout with a total of 176 economy class seats. Each seat is equipped with a touchscreen TV, and pillows and blankets were ready on all seats. Something strange was that for the seats in front of my row, despite having a TV stowed under the armrest, another TV was also available on the seat back in front of them. I guess they were for the safety demonstration video. It was time to wave goodbye, and the engines were started. Same as Cafe Dragon's Airbus 320, a lot of water vapor comes out from the air conditioning system, making the cabin musty and cold. Looking out of the window, I saw a Cafe Pacific A330 taking off. Part of me wished I was on that Cafe flight. Haha. <laughs> Before flying, I really didn't expect much from the entertainment system, and so I was surprised that a wide variety of movies and shows was available, with a large selection of Chinese TV shows and movies as well. Underneath the television, there's a USB port for charging devices. Air sickness bag, a safety instruction card, and the surrendered magazines were found in the seat pocket. Some may wonder why there wasn't a headset. The headset was distributed one by one by the cabin crew. The pillowcase was a bit too rough in texture, and I think it was made of some low-quality materials. The ones from Cafe are softer and fluffier. The recline was quite generous, but I didn't know why the seat would return to be upright by itself after some time. An impractical cold hook was also on the seat. In general, everything in the cabin looked new, and unlike what's mentioned by some rumors online, there wasn't any unpleasant odor in the cabin. I was happy with the comfortable seat and the state-of-the-art IFE system. The e menu was in the IFE system as well. However, the food offerings were different from those shown on the printed menu. In the end, it turned out the food on the printed menu was served. But I think the concept of e menu is quite good, and is something that cafe can adopt. The dinner service was quite simple. Unlike cafe, no nuts were served before the meal. A drink was served together with the tray. I had a glass of Pepsi, 
I was indeed a bit surprised to find metal cutleries on Sri Lankan's flights. Along with a spoon, a fork and a knife, there were also packets of pepper, salt and sugar. Dinner began with a Russian salad comprising potatoes, carrots, beans and red cabbage. This was the best tasting dish for me on the meal tray. For the main course, there was a choice between chicken with rice and stir-fried beef with linguine pasta. I got the latter. The noodles were a bit too oily and wet. When almost everyone had finished their meals, the person walked along the aisle for a tea and coffee service. Sri Lanka is well known for her salmon tea. I therefore had a cup of it and had it with the dessert, a milk tart. The tart tastes a bit weird, but I did finish all of it. After a sip of the Ceylon tea, I added some milk and sugar, and it was toothsome. After the meal service, some passengers stood up and walked along the aisle. I decided to visit the toilet. The messy and unhygienic condition really shocked me. The floor was wet and clumps of tissue papers were littered all around. Moreover, the sink did not drain well. Returning to my seat, I filled in the e-survey and I gave some negative feedback on the toilet condition. Some of you left a comment under my previous videos asking to have a look of my flight log. The flight attendant returned it to me mid-flight and this time I finally remembered to include it in my flight review. This flight log was made by myself and feel free to give me some comments about it. Lights were turned off for passengers to sleep and from that point on, the cabin crew disappeared into the galley and did not come out until about an hour before arrival for the drink service. Drinks including apple juice, orange juice and water were served for passengers to refresh themselves. I took a glass of apple juice. About 20 minutes before landing, and before preparing the cabin for landing, the cabin crew came and stood in the aisle and said goodbye on behalf of Sri Lankan Airlines. The cabin crew were required to collect blankets and headsets before landing. It's probably a measure to avoid passengers taking them away from the aircraft. Shortly, lights were back on and the cabin was ready for landing. Overall, I enjoyed my first Sri Lankan Airlines experience. There were things that other airlines can learn from her, but also things that can be improved. What was good include the e-menu, the entertainment system, the cabin and the service. The cabin crew seated opposite to me during takeoff and landing was remarkably nice. We chatted a bit before disembarkation and she recommended I visit a famous temple in her country. One she repeated many times was very beautiful. Things that can be improved included the meal quality, the meal service, and the toilet hygiene. Still, I really enjoyed traveling with Sri Lankan Airlines, a member of the One Word Alliance. Thank you for watching. Coming soon will be a video on another Sri Lankan Airlines flight from Colombo to Mali operated by an Airbus 330 and a video on my latest business class experience with my home carrier, Cafe Pacific, from Mali back to Hong Kong. Stay tuned! If you like this video, like, share and leave a comment. Also don't forget to subscribe. Let me know if there's something that I can improve on as this is how I can make better videos. See you soon! Thank you.